hello there you guys it is Matthews here I'm just recording this for you so that you can have a look at how you can have a go at doing questions for paper one and using those evaluative skills which can sometimes prove to be a bit tricky now if you just look at the mark scheme one thing that you should be able to see is that where we really need to be is in that clear or relevant band 11 to 15 marks now if you have a look that means that what we need to be able to do is to clearly evaluate the text uh, provide examples from the text, which means your quotations. Clearly explain the effect of those writers' choices. So not just pointing out and spotting devices, making sure that we can explain the effect of them, what the connotations are, um, and ex ex selecting some relevant quotations to support your views. This question is quite a big question in terms of marks. So paper one, it's worth 20 marks. So if we can try and get within to that level three band, that will give you a really good start in terms of being able to maximise your potential on the paper. So let's have a look at this extract then. It says, Dear is Meg, it isn't going to be what we expected. It's old and little and altogether delightful. Red brick. We can scarcely pack it in as it is. And the dear knows what will happen when Paul, youngest son, arrives tomorrow. From hall, you go right or left into dining room or drawing room. Hall itself is practically a room. You open another door in it and there are the stairs going up in a sort of tunnel to the first floor. Three bedrooms in a row there and three attics in a row above. That isn't all the have really, but it's all that one notices. Nine windows as you look up from the front garden. Then there's a very big witch elm to the left as you look up, leaning over a little over the house and standing on the boundary between the garden and the meadow. I quite love that tree already. Also ordinary elms, oaks. No nastier than ordinary oaks. Pear trees, apple trees and mine. No silver birches though. However, I must get on to my host and hostess. I wanted to show that it isn't the least what we expected. Why did we settle that their house would be all gables and wiggles and their garden all gamboed coloured paths? I believe simply because we associate them with expensive hotels. Mrs Wilcox trailing in beautiful dresses down long corridors, etc. This long letter is because I'm writing before breakfast. Oh, the beautiful vine leaves. The house is covered with a vine. I looked at her earlier, and Mrs Wilcox was already in the garden. She evidently loves it. No wonder she sometimes looks tired. She was watching the large red poppies on that. Then she walked off the lawn to the meadow, whose corner to the right I can just see. Trail, trail, went her long dress over the sopping grass, and she came back with her hands full of the hay that was cut yesterday. I suppose for rabbits or something, cause she kept on smelling it. Air here is delicious. Later on, I heard the noise of croquet balls and looked out again, and it was Charles Wilcox practising. They were keen on all games. Presently, he started sneezing and had to stop. So one of the first things that I'd like you to do now is have a think about that skill that you need for question one, um, which is just to list all the things that Helen loves about her new surroundings. You can list them if you want in terms of inference. So it can be direct quotation. Both would be completely acceptable by the examiner. I'll give you a few moments to do that. Next thing to do then is to let's focus on this question for skill of evaluation. So, it says, looking at the extract as a whole, evaluate how well the writer portrays a sense of wealth and beauty. It's really important that you, it's almost like a two-part question. Don't just ignore the fact that it says wealth. It needs to be wealth and beauty. So make sure that when you're looking for your evidence, that you're looking for evidence of wealth and beauty. They're not necessarily the same. Um, so it says this question addresses the assessment objective, which is AO4, being able to evaluate the text critically and support this with appropriate textual references. But please do remember, agreeing that the writer effectively portrays a sense of wealth and beauty is normally the better choice. You can then select ways to support the statement. You can disagree or partially agree, but both of those are more difficult to do and more difficult to do well often. So here's where we're going to start to select our evidence. You're probably going to need to read through this extract a few times on your own. I would always recommend that. And once you've done that, choose two colours. One colour doesn't need to be red and blue, but one colour can be the colour that you use to put, uh, highlight sections that you think portray a sense of wealth. And then choose your other colour to highlight any sections that you think a sense of beauty. That will make sure that you're addressing both parts of those questions rather than coming up with evidence that actually isn't going to help you to prove 
um, your feelings on the question. As you challenge, if you want to identify the word class and the devices of those sections that you discover, that would also be really good. Okay, I'll give you a few moments to do that. So here are a few of the things that I came up with. Um, if we look at the portrait of sense of beauty, it came up with a delightful red brick. That adjective of delightful gives us a real clue that the red brick isn't something that's overbearing, isn't something that's kind of ugly, it's something that's really quite um, you know, beautiful to this person. The big witch owl, um, garden and meadow, you've got this really kind of like sense of nature, haven't you? Naturalistic impression. Pear trees, apple trees and a vine. So again, lots of the things that I've come up with in terms of portraying a sense of beauty are to do with that kind of natural symbolism, the idea that nature is often considered to be beautiful for people. Portraying a sense of wealth is slightly different, isn't it? So we've got the hall itself is practically a room. If your hall itself is practically a room, that suggests to me and connotes that the hall's rather large. My hall is not practically a room. My hall's quite, you know, slim. It's quite narrow. So to have a hall that's practically a room suggests that idea of kind of an expanse of space. The fact that there are three bedrooms in a row there and three attics um, in, a, in, in a room, a row above, again, suggests this idea that there's a lot of room. There's a lot of rooms within this house. And you don't have a lot of rooms within your house unless you're particularly wealthy. There are nine windows as you look up from the front garden. So again, this idea of space and all of these ideas of space kind of lends out to this idea of wealth. Because as we just said, without um, you know, wealth, you don't get the same sense of space. So now what you're going to need to do is exactly like what we just talked about. Go over your evidence. It doesn't matter whether your evidence matches mine. And try and have a really good look at what the connotations are. So for example, we've got beautiful vine leaves, the house is covered with vine, large red poppies, trail trail went for a long dress over the sopping grass. There's lots of relaxing imagery there. There's no hint of work in or a job, which again has those connotations of wealth, doesn't it? That if you don't need to work, then clearly you are in a situation where you have wealth. Um, so just make sure that you go over those quotations and you know exactly why you selected them. You've got an idea of the connotation and the suggestion. Once you've done that, you can then put your responses into a planning grid. If you look at the grid that we've got below, we've got point, quote, um, an explanation box, and then that idea of the effects on you as a reader. This will help you to make sure that you hit in all of those elements that you need to within the question. So the point, for example, would be the writer begins to describe features of the house to create a sense of wealth. The quotation that I went for was three bedrooms in a row there and three attics in a row above. This begins to show the vast size of the building. The fact that there are three bedrooms and attics suggests that there's a lot of space to be explored. It connotes a sense of amazement at the sheer size of the house and suggests the large scale of the house and the large amount of money it must have taken to buy it. So if you can then feed your quotations into a similar grid, you don't need to draw the grid up. It can literally just be a planning kind of sheet ready for you to write up into your paragraphs in a moment. And then finally, what you want to do is to then put these into your paragraphs. What you're looking for here is your and your red section. So remember those sentence stems if you need them. The quotation reveals, this quotation also shows. Trying to get as much detail and development as you can. Don't just put down one idea, put down several ideas, but try to make sure that these really are alternative analysis or additional analysis. Then your red section, remembering to pick apart your quotation, remembering to use your subject terminology. In an ideal world, in 20 minutes, you'd be able to do three of these PQEs. Now, obviously, for your year group, we've got two years until you're at GCSE, but if you can practice the timing, that would be brilliant. So, time yourself, get your phone out on the desk. Can you write three PQEs for this question in 20 minutes? And at what quality can you do that? And then finally, let's go back to the SMART scheme and check your work against it. How do you think that you fare? Do you think that you have clearly evaluated the text? Did you come up with some really good examples? And have you clearly explained the effect to the writer's choices? If you've done all of those bullets, then that would get you 15 marks out of 20. If you think you've done some of them, but not others, then again, have a look at the marks and adjust them down. It could well be that we're not into that level 3 at this point, and that's perfect, that's fine, please don't worry about that. But it is what we're aiming for eventually. 
So there ends our lesson on paper one question four. If you have had a go at that question and you want us to have a look at the examples that you've made, feel free to send them into the English department email address or send them personally to me, Miss Matthews, um, and we'll have a look over them and mark them for you. Okay, thanks for that. Bye, you nine.